The recent announcement of Figma AI generated both excitement and controversy. Let's summarize the new features and then look behind the curtain at how those features were done. For context, you might recall the big news story at the end of last year when Adobe had to fork out a billion dollars in termination fees in order to abandon its proposed acquisition of Figma, which is a market-leading design tool for creating prototypes of digital experiences. To start, here's Figma AI in under three minutes. First, there's AI-enabled search. For example, we can post a copy of an image we used in the past, as you can see being done here, and Figma will locate the source file for that to save designers time. Or you can search for assets by a logical name. For example, if you search for primary button, Figma might suggest an asset called BTN large, even though the name of that asset does not contain the word primary or even the full word button. That's because it knows what to look for and it understands the concept of primary. So it finds a button that seems to be the main one based on how it's been used in actual designs. That search. Now, efficiency tools. The tool that got the loudest applause at config 2024 is one that can rename and reorganize layers based on context to keep things more clear so everyone will understand them better. Another efficiency tool does background removal, as you can see being done here. So no need to export to other software just to get that task done. So you stay in your workflow. And three. Content generation, both text and images. Here you can see text being automatically generated to help populate a recipe app. This is before the actual copy is ready. Doing this makes a client demo look more realistic than filling it in with a lot of lorem ipsum. There's also translation to other languages, as you can see being done here, which helps for checking that the foreign language version still fits in the space. So the space can be adjusted if need be. And here's an example of images being generated. As with text, this is also to give a better feel for how a design might actually look before the final images are ready. Building on this, Figma AI also showed complete layouts being generated just from a text prompt, including design, font choices, images, and text, as you can see being done here. The purpose of this is to help teams to get started quickly with some initial design ideas. So that's Figma AI in under three minutes. Image and asset search, new efficiency tools, and content generation, including text, images, and layouts. Now, how was this done? Here's the announcement. It says, all of the generative features we're launching today are powered by third-party, out-of-the-box AI models. Which ones, it doesn't say. But CNBC asked about that. So we know from that interview with CEO Dylan Field that the features I just mentioned were in fact powered by OpenAI language models and by the Amazon Titan diffusion model. For reference, here's a summary again of those features. Now, let's infer which models were used for which features and then draw conclusions from that about Figma's strategy. First, Amazon Titan Diffusion. Which tasks would it do? Well, diffusion models are for generating and understanding images, including image search based on visual similarity, 
So that would map to these tasks. By the way, you might have seen the controversy about this last one here, layouts. Apple accused Figma of training too much on existing apps, especially Apple's weather app. So Figma decided to turn off that feature for now until they can get things sorted out. Back to our grid. These others are tasks that would be well suited for OpenAI's language models. And some of these might have used both models, especially the full layouts feature. Now the takeaways. First, in the CNBC interview, Dylan emphasized that there's a big difference between a chatbot approach to AI and a product approach. And he went on to say that Figma is not trying to sprinkle what he calls AI fairy dust on its tools, which implicitly he linked to the chatbot approach. Rather, his goal is to bake AI capabilities deep into the product in a way that fundamentally transforms designers' work. Not a bad goal. And here's probably the main insight. CNBC asked Dylan, why those two models? Referring, of course, to OpenAI's LLMs and Amazon Titan. First, Dylan replied that those were working well for their use cases. But he also said that they made a decision to build things in a modular way so they could swap out models if better ones became available later on or if prices decrease. In other words, he's keeping his options open. And let's look at those two specific choices from that point of view. First, OpenAI. Well, that was a very safe choice for the language models. As you can see here, it can be independently verified that those models are currently at the top of various leaderboards. On the other hand, we cannot say that Amazon is ranked above OpenAI for diffusion models. It's the other way around, as you can see here. Still, a leaderboard like this one doesn't tell the whole story. Probably, Titan had some specific capabilities related to image search or background removal that might have been especially relevant for Figma some of which you can see mentioned on this Amazon product page. So the decision might have been driven in part by those specific use cases that were more relevant to Figma. Still, it's fair to say that having two vendors involved in a solution increases the complexity. So there need to be benefits that offset that. And here's what those might be. One, a better negotiating posture that avoids vendor lock-in. Two, business continuity. If one vendor faces issues or downtime, the other one might be able to fill the gap. Also, by spreading bets across two vendors, Figma is better positioned to capture upside from new models of either OpenAI or Amazon. And three, technical integration. For this one, it's relevant that Figma is hosted on AWS, which they use for their cloud infrastructure. They use EC2 servers and S3 storage and other Amazon offerings. And that goes a long way towards explaining why Amazon is in the mix on this. So there you have it, a summary of Figma AI, and along with that, a look behind the curtain at the underlying models that were used, plus key takeaways, including possible reasons for two key vendors instead of one. Meanwhile, thanks for watching and see you next time. But you look sweet. On the seat of a bicycle built for two.
We'll just pedal away on a bicycle bit.